Damon Payne has committed to Alabama. We got to talk about it after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You got to help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> What's up, Ken Folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always college football related, sports related. We have a good time today. We need to talk about Damon Payne who has committed to the 2021 recruiting class for Nick Saban's Alabama Crimson Tide. Nick Saban continues a tear that he has been on and we have to talk about him in the same way that we talk about Ohio State which is say that they're up over 280 points with 16 commits in the boat and they can take up to 27 this year. So they are truly chasing Ohio State and what Tristan Lay decides to do when his recruitment comes up, when Emeka Egbuka decides to do when his recruitment comes up, both will figure into that. Both of those guys have Ohio State on their list. One of those guys has Alabama on their list. And as I have said and will continue to say, Alabama's offensive line class is already next level. If you could add Tristan Lay to J.C. Latham, Terrence Ferguson, James Brockermeyer, Tommy Brockermeyer, you got one hell of, of an offensive line class. And now you get to add one of the top, not just one of, the top defensive tackle in the 2021 cycle. And the number 14 overall recruit in the 247 sports composite in Damon Payne at 6'4", 300 pounds. His first step is already drawing comparisons to another outstanding Alabama defensive tackle. That would be Quinnen Williams. And one of the things that I've said and one of the things that we will continue to say, when you're talking about winning the college football playoff, when you're talking about being the best team in all of college football, regardless of division, you are talking about the best offensive lines and defensive lines in football. I think I need to add it here. The Joe Moore Award-winning offensive line has certainly, for the past five years, gone to a team that has made the college football playoff. And then if you're talking about the top defensive tackles in all of college football, you are routinely looking at teams that win national championships, okay? We take a look at Alabama at that 2017-2018 squad. They were ridiculous in the middle. And we look at that 2018 Clemson squad. Four guys starting on the defensive line. Four guys drafted in the first round of the NFL draft. Led by Dexter Lawrence and Christian Wilkins. You're talking about outstanding defensive tackles. You're talking about the best teams in college football. And this is yet another win for Nick Saban in a series of wins to start this month with Dallas Turner, to add the Brockermeyer twins, to add Kendrick Blackshear, to add Terrence Ferguson, and now Damon Payne just before we close out the month of July. Nobody's had a better July than Alabama. And that's saying a lot because LSU has done tremendous work picking up four-star talent this month as has Ohio State flipping a Clemson commit to Ohio State just less than a week after he was committed to Clemson. I talked with Barrett Carter, who is friends with Jordan Hancock, the flipped commit to Ohio State, and you can check that out right here on the show. But sticking with Alabama here just a second, with them having 16 commits, 280 points, they are clearly the number two team in the team rankings right now, just 25 points behind Ohio State, but that's 25 points across three commits, right? So there is a way for Alabama to make that up, but they need to add a quarterback to this class, which is why I think Jalen Milrow's name is about to continue to just pick up steam and pick up smoke as we head into the college football season this August with week zero already featuring two more games than we had scheduled, one of them being Oklahoma and Missouri State, another being Southern Illinois and Kansas. Now we're talking about Alabama perhaps getting a game with BYU in place of a game that they were going to have with USC with teams going to the conference only slate. But with my pick of Alabama winning the national championship in January, they are certainly coming on strong like they expect to be there not just this year, but the next year. And for 10 years, it's been Nick Saban's world and we have been living in it. And the kiddos are now entering a run where they don't know what it's like for the SEC not to rule college football. Take it all the back, way back to 2004 when Auburn gets shafted out of playing in the 2004 National Championship game with an undefeated season. Wasn't a great Auburn team, but it was good enough to play for a National Championship team. And really, so was Ohio State in 2012. But we don't really have those discussions because postseason ban for Ohio State. And then everybody knows what happened with that 04 team with Auburn and Tubby Tuberville and his one shining moment. But basically, it's been 16 consecutive years of SEC dominance. Right? We've seen Auburn, we've seen Florida in 06, we saw Alabama in 09, we saw LSU in 07. We're continuing to see those teams continue to pick up steam with only Ohio State, Florida State being able to break it up from time to time. Oklahoma hasn't won a national championship in 20 years, and a big reason as to why is they are losing guys like Damon Payne. 
You have to be in on those kinds of kiddos, and you have to be able to turn that talent into first-round NFL draft talent, which is what Alabama does routinely. Talking about 63 draft picks from the SEC conference alone in the 2020 NFL draft, right? Now, to that, add that LSU had 14 off of their one team last year in this draft, and Alabama's like, watch this, we'll be there next year because they'll have Jalen Waddle, right? They will have Devontae Smith. They'll have Patrick Sertain. They'll have Dylan Moses. They'll have Najee Harris and Alex Leatherwood. And on it goes because this is just what Nick Saban does. The personnel around him has changed. The assistant coaches around him have changed. And he's continued to be one of the best college football recruiters of all time. It's really Nick Saban, Barry Switzer up there with guys like Jackie Sherrill and John Blake, even RIP, as we continue to talk about it. One other thing to look at here is I was salivating over the offensive line class, and now you got two great defensive tackles inside the top 500 for Alabama committed to the class. That's ridiculous, right? Especially coming out of prep because there aren't that many good defensive tackles, right? We've been talking about Damon Payne. We've been talking about Mason Smith. Most of what we end up talking about is strong side defensive ends or weak side defensive ends. JT Tumualau is still way up there. Right, he's still really, really good, and he's either gonna pick Ohio State, Oregon, or Washington. But we'll have to wait and see. See what Corey Foreman does as well in there. Mason Smith, we believe, is an LSU lean, and was just a matter of time. But really, we don't talk that much about great defensive tackles because they're really difficult to project, and you're having that count on a lot. Like Damon Payne is essentially the same size as Terrence Ferguson. One guy plays offensive guard. One guy is an A gap, just mauler in the middle. And then when you see what it takes for them to develop and how quickly they develop, it took Neville Gallimore five years to be the kind of guy that gets drafted in the third round by my Dallas Cowboys, and that's with him being a big freak. 800-pound squat, 500-pound bench, 4 seven, 40. And that's it, like 300 pounds, all right? If Damon Payne ends up to be one of those dudes, you understand what it's going to be. You understand how it's going to be. You understand to get down at Alabama because Alabama just picks him up, puts him down. Now we're talking about a... Two-man race, team, two-team race right now for number one. Ohio State's going to have to come up with another big-time commit to basically put that out of reach because they're still also chasing 324.62 as the number one class of all time. There were 28 commits in that Florida class back there in 2010, 2014. But I want to focus on what Alabama's been able to do in the last month with these, not just number of commits, but the quality of commit because when we talk about quality and quantity we're only talking about two teams that have had both one of those is Ohio State one of those is Alabama now what does this mean for the rest of college football you better pick them up put them down yourself because Clemson had gone from not seeing a decommitment in eight years to two in four months Corey Foreman and Jordan Hancock and neither one of them looks like they're going to sign with Clemson come early signing period if we still get an early signing period or National Signing Day, which would be February next year. LSU still has an opportunity here because they are basically looking for a five-star offensive tackle, a Tristan Lee, or another running back to go along with Corey Kiner, perhaps a Kamara Wheaton. You could also see Oregon continue to come on because what they've been able to do and what Ty Thompson has been able to do and the only times that we've been able to see many kids get evaluated skyrocketing up as a four-star recruit. Troy Franklin is a five-star recruit. Isaiah Brivert has an opportunity to do something there. And they can add Corey Foreman along with an, another outstanding corner. They're going to be pretty good. You also look at USC. Having two quarterbacks in the class kind of puts your thumb on the scale for a little bit, but they've been able to add and add well to that. We're also going to watch and see what Texas and Oklahoma look like. Because if Oklahoma goes on the kind of tear that I think that they can – it could, it could get interesting. They could push for a top five class, but I've been very, very skeptical of how they could get there. I've said top 10 is within reason, and that's about where Oklahoma should be. Same thing with Texas. We're talking about Oklahoma and Texas had the number three and number six classes in the 2019 composite. Now, we're talking about them getting outshined by North Carolina and Tennessee, Michigan, among others, with a Florida just right there, just lying in wait. Picked up another great commit this weekend, along with James Williams, who basically shunned Georgia to go to Miami. So it's really leveling out, and the cream is starting to rise just before we get to August 1st. I'm excited. All right, that's it for me. Deuces.